Hello everyone and welcome to another video, the first of 2024. Happy New Year! Today I'm going to talk a bit about my 2024 journal system, which actually changed at the very last minute. I added a new book to the system just before 2024 started, literally a few days before the start of the new year. Long story short, it's a Hobonichi Weeks, you can see it, it's beautiful, look at the cats. But yeah, in this video I'll kind of talk about why I made this addition to my system and I'll take you through how I'll be using both of these books. But before I get into that, a couple of housekeeping points. One is, uh, I know my nails are scuffed, I just want to establish that right now. <laughs> They're not looking their best. A few of them snapped, so I just kind of filed all of them down. It, it's a whole thing. I'm getting them done in like two days. But I couldn't wait that long to film, so you all get my <laughs> strange, scuffed Christmas nails. Second, I made a little like community post about this, but in case you didn't see, I now have a discount code for the washi tape shop. As the name suggests, they sell washi tape. <laughs> and if you use my code, which is elliebooks10 at checkout, you'll get 10% off any products that you buy. And I'll get a little commission too. I'll pop that code in like the little description of this video. All right, preamble aside, let's get on to the journal system. To start, I'll kind of give a little background on what I look for in a journal system, because that is kind of needed to understand why I added this book into the mix. Basically, I use my journal system for three things. Daily journaling, commonplacing, if you're not sure what that is, I have like a whole video about it, which you can find on my channel. And planning, which is basically just like keeping track of all my tasks that have to do and events and whatnot. Previously, I thought I wanted to do all three of those things in the Hobonichi Cousin. I figured it would be more convenient that way, only having like one book to cart around everywhere and one book to like remember to fill out. And that's actually how I used my 2023 Cousin Avec as like a planning, journaling and commonplacing thing. It's also how I'd initially set up the 2024 Cousin, and I'll show you that actually. I'd planned to basically have planning in the monthly pages, as you can see in this example of December. These stickers are by Petite Gloom or Megan Rhiannon and the Coffee Monsters Co. So yeah, planning in the monthly and then in the weekly. Um, also, ooh, if I can find it, um, so that is a bad example. There we go. In the weekly, a bit of planning and also some journaling and memory keeping here. And then in the daily pages, my commonplacing, which I've been doing a fair bit of. I don't pay attention to the dates, which is why I'm already on like the 17th of January. Anyway, yeah, commonplacing in here. So yeah, that was my intention for the cousin this year. But at the end of last year, when I first started in this book, because I got ahead of myself <laughs> and wanted to get started in December, I started to find that I was running out of space in the weekly pages specifically. I either ran out of room to journal about what I wanted to journal, or I ran out of room for tasks, as you can kind of see on this Sunday here. And this was like consistently happening, both in my old Avec at the end, and also in this 2024 Cousin, where um, by the way, just side note, I'd turned some of the monthly pages into weekly spreads just because I wanted to. Anyway, I was running out of room, basically. It was getting increasingly stressful trying to cram the planning and the journaling into these pages. And I anticipated that this would only get worse because starting this year, I've got like a few more repeating tasks that I have to do, like some physiotherapy exercises because I've mucked my shoulder up <laughs> and some social media stuff and just like life stuff. So... I started thinking that maybe I needed like a supplementary book to take something out of the cousin and reduce that feeling of struggling to fit everything in. I decided that planning was probably the thing to take out because if I do that then the cousin becomes basically just a fun book of journaling and commonplacing, no stressful tasks or events allowed. And plus taking planning out of here means I have more space for memory keeping in these weekly pages, which is always a good thing. But then of course, if I was taking planning out of here, I would need to find an alternative book to use. And I decided that I would have three criteria when looking for this. I knew I wanted something relatively small that I could just shove in my handbag and take everywhere with me. 
because one thing about the cousin is she is bulky, she is big and heavy, and that's already the case in January. I dread to think what this book is going to be like in December. Anyway, <laughs> she's big, she's hefty, she's not always the easiest to carry around, and for that reason I sometimes just didn't carry this around and then I'd be out and need to write an appointment down but wouldn't have my planner with me. It was a whole thing. So yeah, I wanted something small for the portability aspect of it. I also wanted something that was dated already. Um, I didn't want to pick up like just a blank notebook and start say bullet journaling because I know that I'm not the type of person who can keep up with that. Like you have to create all the spreads yourself. It's just a lot of work. I'm not somebody who can do that consistently. So I wanted a dated book that already had everything set up for me. And finally, I wanted something pretty because why not? I love a pretty journal. And if I'm going to be using this thing every single day, I want it to look nice and to kind of spark joy in me when I pick it up. All of that came together to push me towards the Hobonichi Weeks, which I will return to the pile here. It is pretty, pretty small and portable, nice and slim. It's very pretty. Again, look at the cats. Love me a cat. And yeah, it is obviously dated. You can kind of see here. So it ticked all my boxes. It's Hobonichi as well. I'm a sucker for them, honestly. Like, I've tried other books, but there's just something about Hobonichi that... It just scratches an itch in my soul. I just love it. So yeah, I bought Hobonichi Weeks. I am loving it so far. I do not regret this decision in the slightest. It is so much fun to fill out. And I feel like since having it, I've already got like more on top of all of my tasks. It's crazy. Now we've covered why I got this book and why I made my system this like two book Hobonichi extravaganza. Let's talk about how specifically I'm going to use each book. I'll start with the weeks since it's on top. So opening the first page, I have some decor in here. I have one of Megan Rhiannon or Petite Gloom's gloomies, one about keeping a notebook and how important it is to my well-being because yeah, <laughs> it really is. And then on the other side here, I have some little Pokemon cards. And this came to pass because when I was home for Christmas, I reclaimed all my old Pokemon cards, <laughs> which I'd given to my brother, but he didn't really want them anymore, and I did want them, so here they are. I actually scanned in a few of my favourites and stuck them here, so I have, like, some Pokemon pals to greet me every time I open the book. It's quite nice. <laughs> and then moving to the yearly little log thingamajiggy here, this I'm using to track the numbers on my YouTube and Instagram. Not because I'm super numbers focused and like want to make this a career and want to hit 5 billion subscribers or anything, but just basically to celebrate the milestones that something that I enjoy doing is resonating with people enough that they're like following me or subscribing. For me, community and, you know, connecting with like-minded people is a big reason of why I post journaling content. I want to share that with people and talk to people who also love journaling and when the numbers kind of creep up on my socials, it shows that that community for me is getting a bit bigger. And I just really love that. And these dots also signify when I've posted things. So I've posted an Instagram post every other day so far this year. I have not posted a single YouTube video yet. As we know, <laughs> you're on this channel, you can see when the last video was. But when I do post, I'll add a little red dot to signify that. And got some little minimalist decor here, some of the Coffee Monsters Co's YouTube themed emoji stickers and then just the name of my channel just in case I forget you know <laughs> to be honest it was mostly because I didn't know what else to put here so I was like eh, might as well <laughs> but yeah that's a simple way I'm using this to track the milestones of something that brings me joy now moving on to the monthly pages these are just a calendar basically keeping track of events and repeating tasks and even one-off tasks that I really want to remember they all go in here as you'll see in December, I also use this to do like a little review of the month. But if I'm honest, I don't really like how that looks. Like it feels a bit busy now that there's writing here as well. So I think in future months, I'm not gonna do this and just decorate this sidebar instead. In fact, I can show you January so far. I've got an emoji sticker here. And my plan is to basically stick like three or four emojis for the month that kind of sum up what the month was like. So basically still doing a review of the month, just visually instead of in writing. And I filled the rest of the space with some washi tape. And then I've got some more of Megan Rhiannon's winter sticker set here. So yeah, that's the monthlies. Just, 
my calendar, basically. Gotta keep on top of what I'm supposed to be doing each day because I would forget if I didn't write it down. And in a similar vein of trying to keep on top of my life and remember what I'm supposed to be doing, let's turn to the weeklies because yeah, these are basically the backbone of my life right now. <laughs> I'm tracking everything major that I need to do on these two pages. On the left hand side in the actual like dated boxes, this is for events and tasks that I need to do like on a specific day that are kind of one-off things. And then in contrast, on the other side, I've got this kind of bullet journal style almost list of tasks. It's based on the Alistair method, which I was introduced to by a Caitlin Gray video. If I can find the specific video, I'll link that. But if not, I'll just link her channel because to be honest, all of her content is amazing. You should watch it all. But anyway, <laughs> yeah, this list is more for things that are going to repeat every week. For the most part, obviously I have other here for stuff that isn't, <laughs> but for the most part, these are things that I'm just going to copy out every single week that I need to do or want to do. So it's things like repeating habits for my health, moving my body more, doing my NHS shoulder stretches for my sore shoulder, which didn't go so well last week, but I was ill. So, you know, giving myself a break there. <laughs> and then we've got like my repeating journal tasks, like remembering to fill in my health tracker, which I've historically been terrible at and remembering to like do my little daily journaling and my cousin which we'll get to in a little while. I have like repeating social media related tasks for posting on Instagram and YouTube and this is mostly because even though I love doing these things I would forget to do them if I didn't write it down. Like that's how my brain works. I am so bad at remembering to do things that I enjoy. Like <laughs> yeah I just need that written reminder to actually like take the photos, post them, this is something you like doing, don't let it get lost in the fogs of your brain. So yeah, that's a big long list there of all of the socials stuff that I want to do each week. We've got chores, lovely, fun house chores. Again, would forget to do them if I didn't write them down. So yeah, this is just a dashboard of everything I need to do in a week. It has really helped me get on top of the things that I need to do. Last week, perhaps not so much because I was ill for a little while there with a cold and obviously everything kind of goes a bit to pot when you're ill. You don't really remember to do things or check your planner because you're too busy being ill. This week, which I'll, I'll just turn to that, this week I have been doing much better at keeping on top of things and I think a lot of it is because I've got this dedicated space to just open this book every morning and be like, here's what I need to do. I think that's just about everything I have to say about the weeks. I'm using it relatively simply. I mean, for example, I'm not really using the notes pages at the back right now for anything. I might use them just for like notes, random notes, but there's not like a dedicated function for them. I'm keeping it simple, keeping it streamlined and keeping it focused on what I need it for, which is help organizing myself. <laughs> and it's doing a great job. Really, really glad that I decided to do this. If there is something about this book that you want to know that I haven't talked about, feel free to ask away in the comments because I feel like I've forgotten something, but I probably haven't. I just constantly feel like I forget things because I do. <laughs> so yeah, I don't know where this is going. Let's let's move on. <laughs> let's move to the cousin because how I'm using that has changed based on the addition of this little beauty. All right, it's cousin time. Let's get started. First with an updated note on decoration. When I did my setup video for this book, I did show some of the decor that I've put in there, but at the time I was still waiting on some stickers to arrive. They have now arrived and I've added more of them in here. Now initially I was going to put them on this inside cover here. Then I realised I keep this in a cover that obscures this page. So the stickers I've stuck here I can't see most of the time. <laughs> I really should have thought that one through before I started. I've ended up having to change that plan and instead my second like sticker page is this one. In case you missed it last time, these stickers are basically representing all of my special interests. I'm autistic and special interests are like a huge part of my life. So on this page we had like planner stuff, Taylor Swift, Pokemon, tea, books, Pride and Prejudice 2005, all the good things. And then on this next page we have more of the good things. We've got Nandor the Relentless. What We Do in the Shadows is one of my favourite TV shows ever. Very sad to hear it's going to end after the next series. I am not ready and would frankly never be ready for that. But yeah, we've got Nandor, my favourite of the vampires. We've also got this lovely illustration of Fraser Crane and Niles Crane clinking their little coffee cups in Cafe Nervosa. Big Fraser fan over here, if you hadn't guessed that. 
we've got some Animal Crossing villagers, some of my favourites. We've got Lucky, who is just a spooky icon. We've got Kitty, who I love because my cat's also called Kitty. And my cat kind of looks like that. So it's a match made in heaven. <laughs> got Celeste and Brewster and Dom. Then, to fill the space a bit, I put in some more Pokemon. All from Generation 2, I think. Pokemon Crystal was my first ever video game. So always has a special place in my heart. Got another book. Got Starry Night by Vincent van Gogh. And then to finish it off, we've got the moon. Who doesn't love the moon? It's just a great celestial body. So yeah, that's the second special interest page. Here I stuck another one of Megan Rhiannon's Gloomies, the other one that's about keeping a notebook and being grateful for the solace that they give us, because yeah, they really do. And then that is it for the inside cover decor. We can move on to how I'm actually using it. So yearly hasn't changed, but I'm going to show you it anyway. I, oh, that's a monthly. Yearly, where are you? There you go. Using that to track the movement I engage in. Obviously, the first week didn't quite go to plan in this regard, but this week has been going better. I've been doing walks outside, although not today because it rained. I might do some yoga today. And it's just gentle stuff to help me feel a bit more limber, I guess. I'm also probably going to keep filling out the monthly YouTube and Instagram stats here, even though I have it in the weeks too, just because I've like committed now. You know what I mean? Like I could cover this, but I can't be bothered. So I might as well just fill it in <laughs> and maybe in the next set of yearlies, I can do something a bit different. But for now, I'm just going <laughs> to respect past me's choices and fill that out. I've just realised there's a shadow on this page of my phone charger. So if you're wondering what like the random line is, if you can even see it, it's my phone charger in shadow. Anyway, let's move on to the monthlies because these have changed. Initially, I was using these as a calendar, but I've been doing that in the weeks instead don't need two calendars, would probably never look at one of them. So I've decided to change function and use these as kind of a directory or an index for the daily pages. So obviously the daily pages are dated and in each box here I'll just write what I commonplaced or journaled about on that page. As you can see I often journal for multiple pages about the same topic so I'll just draw arrows to signify that. And yeah, this will be just like a nice little reference guide to my common placing in that set of pages. Once I've finished this, like once I'm through the January pages, what I'll probably do is decorate the margins with things that kind of relate to what I common placed about. So written about Taylor Swift a couple of times might, I don't know, add a Taylor Swift themed sticker in the margin somewhere. Yeah, basically I'll just decorate this in a way that reflects the content, whatever that turns out to be. All right, that is the monthlies. Let's move to the weeklies. And we're in the real weeklies now, not the fake ones that I made at the end of the monthlies here. Just a recap for anyone who missed it. I wanted to start this book a few weeks early, so I converted the last few monthlies into weeklies because they're 2025 calendars normally and I just don't use them. I'll be in a new notebook by then. So yeah, this is how they turned out in the end. I actually think they look really good. Like you can barely even tell that this was a monthly originally. Like, yeah, you can see the numbers a little bit, but... I think it worked out very well. I actually think it improved as the weeks went on. Like with this one, pretty much all of the numbers were just directly covered by something. And then in this one, same goes. Like I could look at this and just think it was a normal weekly and I wouldn't be shocked. And it served its purpose. It let me start this book a few weeks early. So always going to be grateful for that. Anyway, onto actual weeklies now. I will actually navigate to this week because it is more accurate for what I'm actually going to be doing going forward. Now that I've taken planning out of here, I can just dedicate this to journaling. So I'll do a bit of journaling each day about what happened, stick some stickers in that represent it, either from Coffee Monsters Co or Salam Creative, whose stickers I also love. At the bottom here, I'm also going to track my favourite songs of that day. I'm listening to music almost all the time, <laughs> so I wanted a place where I could track exactly what I've been listening to and look back and think, oh right, in January I was enjoying this artist a lot. Gonna have space for one or two songs per day, depending on how long the song title is, I guess. I'll be absolutely doomed if I try and write down any like early Fallout Boy song titles, because <laughs> yeah, they're basically a short poem. Anyway, <laughs> that's what I'm using this space for. 
And then this sidebar, I'll track other types of media that I'm engaging in, what I'm kind of watching, other stuff I'm listening to that I couldn't fit in here. <laughs> Last week I tracked what I was playing, mostly The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom, which I just got completely obsessed with again. If you're wondering what happened here, by the way, I set up the headings to be in my old style with like journaling and then a to-do list. And then I decided to change books. So I had to cover it up, <laughs> which is why there's just like random washi tape covering bits here and there. Anyway, yeah, sidebar is for media. Tracking what I watch, listen to, game, play. That's the verb I'm looking for, play. And read, because again, just like music, basically all media plays a very big role in my life. Most of my hobbies involve consuming media of some kind. And it's one of the things that brings me the most joy in life and always has. So wanted to track that somewhere. I'm really enjoying having more space to journal in here and having a space to dedicate to media. It is creating like this nice special space that I can look back on for all of like the main memories of a certain week, both the basics of what actually happened and the more detailed picture of what I was consuming and how that might have been making me feel, how I might have been say listening to certain songs to help me experience a certain emotion. Like on Monday I was listening to a lot of the Pride and Prejudice soundtrack to try to calm me down because I was anxious. <laughs> and yeah, I just think this is going to be a really nice record of the year in 52 pages. I'm excited to see them fill up now that I'm super confident in my system. Moving on to the final major section of the cousin though, and that is the daily pages, which are my commonplace pages. As noted, I don't pay attention to the dates here anymore. I just fill them up when I feel like it. I actually filled up quite a bit of this before January even started. <laughs> yeah, you can see I, I journaled about Christmas in January because I'd already started this book by then. As mentioned, if you're not quite sure what commonplacing is, I have got some videos on it, but the kind of short version is just recording things that you want to remember, often copied text, song lyrics maybe, quotes, articles. This is an article or at least big chunks of an article. Also just like reflections on things, like I've got a reflection here that relates to that article or I'll often reflect on like special days like Christmas and the things I'm playing like Animal Crossing, although it has kind of taken a backseat to Zelda right now. <laughs> and yeah, lots of quotes here. Basically just keeping a record of anything that really resonated with you or that you think you'll want to remember going forward. And I like to combine media types in mine. It's not just writing. There's a lot of photos, a lot of stickers. I like trying to make the pages look pretty, but I'm also not precious about it. Like everybody's going to make mistakes. Not every page is going to look great. But I try to make this just like a visually pleasing experience for me to look back through. And yeah, it's something that I find is very important to my mental health in quite a few different ways. I might make a whole video on this, to be honest, but commonplacing really helps to connect me with my interests, with who I am, what I'm feeling, the kind of stuff that I'm consuming often reflects the place that I'm in in life. So it's quite insightful in that sense. Like the quotes are copied down. I usually copy down because I'm going through something very similar to what the quote is talking about. And yeah, I just really love it. It's something that brings me a lot of joy. And we all need more of that in life, do we not? All right, that is everything on how I'm using this cousin. I will do like a full flip through at a later date of the pages I filled out already. Quite a few of them, as you can see. And I'll keep doing like monthly updates of how the book transforms throughout the year as I fill it out. And yeah, I think that's everything I wanted to talk about today. That's the basics of my 2024 system, combining this big old cousin with its slightly more compact and portable sister, the Hobonichi Weeks. I am feeling so good about this system. I'm enjoying working in it so much. I can't wait to continue to do so. I think I'm going to have a big commonplacing session tonight, in fact. And I absolutely do not regret adding another book right at the last minute. It's definitely improved my quality of life. Thank you very much for making it to the end of this video. Let me know in the comments what your 2024 system is. And if, like me, you made any last minute additions to it. And I will see you in the next video. Have a great rest of your day and a great week.